What is up guys, I'm Sahil from Kronos Tech and now well once you have installed the Android M that I made a video on, you can check it out in the description below. The next thing that you might want to do is enable this hidden feature in the developer preview. This is called multi-window. You can see right now in the developer options, it's not there anywhere. So there is a little bit trick that you have to follow in order to be able to do that. The first thing that you will need is a custom recovery. I have TWRP in my phone. So you'll also need a custom recovery in your phone. Make sure that you have one and if you don't know how to install custom recovery on Android M then you can check out my video on how to do that. And I've explained everything in that video in the easiest possible way. So once you're done with that the next thing that you need to do is power off the phone. Yeah it's powered off now. Let's boot it into fast boot mode by holding the volume up, volume down and power keys together until this screen shows up. That's right. Now connect the USB cable to your phone. And let's use the navigation buttons to go to the recovery. As I said, you will need TWRP recovery for this, otherwise this process won't work. Make sure you have it and make sure you have the latest version. This is the TWRP version 2.8.6.1. Make sure that your system has the latest FOSBO drivers in order to be able to work with this whole process. Now the first step that you need to take is go to mount and tap on system and make sure that it has a cross in it now. Once it has a cross it means it's selected and you have mounted the system partition. Now you can go to any folder you want but I'm doing it on desktop as I have the fast boot properly set up so I can execute it from anywhere. All you need to do is just hold down the shift key on your keyboard and press the right mouse button and click on open command window here. And after that, in the console, just write the following commands that I'm writing. The first command is adb pull slash system slash build dot prop. I'll be leaving all the commands in the description below so that you do not make any mistakes. You can just copy them from there and paste them directly into your console without any problems. Now you can see wherever you executed the command in the command prompt, it will copy a file called build.prop from your phone and it will copy it into the directory that has the console window. So I was doing everything on the desktop and now I have the file on desktop. Now open this file with a text editor, maybe notepad plus plus or you can just open it with the normal notepad. Now what you need to do is search ro.build.type. You can find it via the find function. Yeah, so just press Ctrl F and write ro.build.type and you can see here is the result. Now change the value of ro.build.type from user to user debug and make sure that you do not press space or enter after that. Just leave it like that. Just change it from user to user debug. And once you have done that, just save your file by Ctrl S or you can manually save it in the file menu and then save. And make sure that you do not save it as a text file or something. Just save it as build.prop. Now let's verify. Yeah, this is ro.build.type equals to user debug. That should work out fine. Let's go for the next command. Let's push this file back into the phone. The command will be adb push build.prop slash system and slash. And this command will push the file that we edited back into the system. Now the next command is adb shell and enter. After that, just go to the system directory by writing cd and system. Now we are in the system directory. What we need to do is now change the permissions for the file that we pushed to 644. So write chmod 644 build.prop. And once that is done, your work is done here. Now all you need to do is go to wipe go to advanced wipe and only wipe cache and dalvik cache nothing more than that once that is done just swipe to wipe yeah that's done let's go back back one more time and go to reboot and power off yeah now in this screen make sure that you do not install super ACU or your phone will get into a boot loop so make sure that you do not do that just click on do not install do not swipe in the screen so once you've done that your phone should boot up perfectly fine now you can see the apps are starting the boot has finished and it's back on my screen 
Now what you need to do is go to settings and from here go to developer options that is on the bottom most edge on the screen developer options last third or maybe second in your case now go to the drawing menu this is networking and input drawing should be here yeah in the drawing menu you will see a new option called multi window mode it's right here all you need to do is just turn it on so this is a warning this is a highly experimental feature that allows multiple activities on screen at the same time through the recent apps UI. Some apps may crash or not function correctly when used with this feature. Yeah, some apps actually did not work. I use it for a day and, but yeah, it's still great. I pretty much think that the people at Google IO should have let it out to the audience and they might have actually enjoyed this feature. Now, all we need to do is go to recent and you can see there's a new frame option. Now you can select either upper layout, lower or full screen. You can see my Twitter is now on the top of the screen. Let's do that with some more apps. Yeah, Chrome. And the lower will be Twitter. Well, it's not working as expected, but uh, yeah, it works with some apps pretty well. Chrome did not appear on the top. Let's open Chrome. And now, let's keep it on the bottom. Now you can see the bottom is Chrome and the top will be Twitter. Yeah, just make it that. Uh, it's not really that effective. TapTalk opened up in space of Chrome that we selected for the bottom part. But yeah, it's actually a good feature. You can use it for splitting up apps and doing multitasking at the same time. The warning said that it's in beta, so obviously you can expect this much bugs and all that stuff. But Although I don't know how the now cards will work and how the back key will respond to what window is actually open and what window you're actually working on. But yeah, that's something that we would face in future. You can try combining multiple tabs. Sometimes those apps open up which I don't even select. Otherwise, it's pretty much a good feature. I think Google should have introduced it earlier. Although Samsung has it, but yeah, Samsung's one is pretty decent. I mean, yeah, it works great. So I think it was time for Google to launch it and now they have finally done it. But yeah, it's in beta phase. Let's wait for the actual thing to come and let's see how it stacks up against the samsung's multi-window feature so that's pretty much all guys i hope it worked for you if there's anything or you face any problem then you can leave it in the comment section below i'll make sure that i answer them and there's one more thing that you can do just follow me on twitter and if there's anything that you can ask me there it is probably a more convenient option i can reply there faster than youtube don't forget to subscribe to my channel and this is chronostech signing off